Fire Call, the Fire Safety Show with Division Chief Jim Sedaris. Hi, my name is Division Chief Jim Sedaris, and you are watching Fire Call, where we're going to take you behind the scenes, Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, America's Fire Department. We're going to be talking to all kinds of people. We're going to be talking to uh, one of our senior captains who's going to retire. We're going to be talking about fire extinguishers. We're going to take you to a two alarm apartment house fire. And, of course, we're going to get some shout outs. Now, we depend on viewer mail. So if you send in a question and we use it, you'll get a sassy Sioux Falls Fire Rescue t shirt. Got the new ones. New ones are yellow. So, you know, everybody wants one. You're going to look great. Everyone's going to be jealous of you. But you got to send those in. And you can send it in uh, off our website. We also will send you a t-shirt if we use your shout-out. Now, what is a shout-out? Shout-outs when we want, when you want us to recognize another fire department around the country. And we get a lot of these shout-outs. First one right here. This first one's from Rob. Rob lives in Center Maurice's New York. And he wants a shout-out to the Center Maurice's Fire Department. Hope I got that one right. If I didn't, you got to tell me how to say these. And this one is from Andrew. Andrew lives in Corona, California, and he wants a shout out to the McCormick Ambulance and the LA County Fire Department in Hawthorne, California. He says they are running all day and all night, and we appreciate it. Andrew also has a question. Andrew wants to know, hey, what are the different types of bunker gear? What are bunker gear made out of? And some of that kind of stuff. So in addition to all this stuff I told you about, we're also going to be talking about bunker gear. That's a sign of a firefighter with their bunker gear. So sit back, tell the kids to be quiet, put away all the electronic gear, sit back and watch Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. We had a two alarm structure fire that came in about 3.30 in the morning. This is a big apartment complex, big fire, had to get a lot of people out. Captain Dan Long was the first one on the scene. Dan, you had to get people off of ladders out of their apartments. Tell us what happened when you pulled up and what did you do? Well, when we arrived, we had people out on the balconies on the far side of the building, away from the fire here. And the first thing we did is ladder the building um, and, and get the people off the third floor balcony. The people on the second and first floor were coming out by themselves, but there was uh, quite a bit of smoke on the third floor, so they weren't able to leave their par apartments that direction. Once uh, we got the, the people off the balcony on, on that side, we came around and brought the ladder on this side, where we got four more people off the balcony. Now, these people are woken up 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, just like they are. Letters are coming up their side of their apartments. What, what did you see? Were they, what were they doing? Were they pretty calm? Did they, were they just throwing stuff out the window? A lot of these people don't have a lot of possessions. Uh, what, what was it like? Actually, they were, they were fairly calm for, for the situation that they were in, and many of them had bundles of, of clothing and other articles in their hands. Um, we told them they couldn't climb down the ladder with the with their clothing so they were throwing them off the balcony so that uh, they could keep some of the few uh, possessions that they had. Uh, you were talking about one of the moms especially and you never know what you're gonna find and she was trying to get one of her kids out. Tell us how did that go? Well when, we, when, when I got up on the ladder to help her down the ladder she had a, a bunch of stuff in her hand she had blankets and other things in her hand and I said you can't climb with the ladder and or with all that down in the ladder and, and, and she dumped the blankets over and then I, she still had something in her hand and I, I realized it was a baby that she had you know, like a papoose in, in, a, in a little knapsack on her and uh, she uh, actually climbed down the ladder with the baby on the front of her. Uh, you, you take extra care when there's a little one like that. Now it's, it's cold here, it's dead of winter. What are some of the concerns you have when you're doing ladder, when you're taking civilians down ladders in the, in the rain and snow? Any special concerns that you had? Well, you know, you never know if you're even going to get them to get on the ladder with you. A lot of people, they don't want to climb over. They're not experienced in getting onto ladders or climbing over a balcony like that. And, uh, and then once they do, the footing's always treacherous. So we try to stand behind them and make sure we have a good grip of the ladder so in case they'd fall backwards, we could protect them and keep them from falling down. Well, making them feel secure is probably the most important thing so that, that they don't freeze up on the ladder and then stop, stop us from rescuing the other people that need us. Well, you did a great job, Dad. You and your crew are well-trained and probably saved some lives here, but I'm going to let you get back to your, we're, we're back to your crew. looks like they're going to be taking off again. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thank you. We have a ton of questions about turnout gear, 
about the gear firefighters wear, about their uniforms, so we're going to get right to this first question. First question is from Leon. Leon lives in Sioux Falls, and he wants to know how long does it take for a firefighter to get all their gear on? And guess what? We're going to time them. It takes two minutes is what we're looking for. Now, who do we have to do this? John Ramby, new firefighter, two years. John? Okay, buddy. You ready? Yep. I'm going to time you, and please, no wagering. You ready? Yep. You get all your gear on. Two minutes. Go. Okay, while he's doing that, we're going to answer some more questions. And I have a question about drivers and what they wear. I have Clint DeBoer. Clint DeBoer, come on in, Clint. How you doing? You are filling in today as a driver. Yes, I am. Then you're going to answer this question, my friend. Sounds good. It comes from Jamie. Jamie lives in Sioux Falls. Jamie says, hey, saw a fire truck going down the street. Everybody had their gear on. Driver wasn't wearing any gear. Well, that's What's the deal? That's right, Jim. Um, there's not a whole lot of room up in the front of that cab, so as soon as we get the call on the station, the driver would get in the map book and find out where we're going. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking the time to put the gear on, we figure out where we're going to go with the fire truck. At that point, we get in and drive to the fire call, and we'll don our gear after we get to the call. So you do have a set of gear. You bet. We do have a set of gear. On the truck. Yes. Because everybody has to be ready to go to war and fight fire. Yep. So you have it on, and then you just pull it all out of the compartments when you get yep. there. Plus, it allows you easier steering. Uh, working the accelerator brake. Instrument panels, you can see everything a lot better, you bet. Perfect. Okay. Oh. Right. I don't know if we can get to another question. I'll go really slow. Okay, another question. This is from Scott. Scott lives in Norwood, New York. He wants to know about how much does a complete set of turnout gear cost? What's the answer? Well, <clears throat> just a little bit ago, we found out that a complete <laughs> set of turnout gear is about $2,000. How long ago did you know that? How long ago? About 10 minutes. There you go. <laughs> okay, what's he coming in at? Does he cross the line yet? Say when Please. to stop. Stop. The time, my friend. Gloves? gloves? Get the gloves on. I'm adding time. I'm adding time. Oh, no. Say stop again when you got the gloves on. Stop. stop. One minute, 47 seconds. Nice job. You're keeping your job for another year, my friend. Nice. Another year. <laughs> now, being that we have you here, all hooked up in your gear, we're going to answer some of these questions about turnout gear. Because everybody wants to know about turnout gear. A lot of different things this gear can be made out of, but the prime thing is it's going to be made out of something that's very flame resistant and it has to meet national standards. It also is very reflective. So we, this is actually several layers. It has an outer layer to prevent the flashover from fire. It has an inner layer to dissipate the heat. It has a thermal barrier to keep the heat from getting in to our firefighters. So it's a, it's a specially designed coat, very expensive, and same thing with turnout gear. Now, we have a lot of questions about colors. And this isn't a fashion statement, it's just what we do here. And we have one from, again, Ethan. He wants to know this question. We have um, Brian. Brian lives in Kansas City, Kansas. We have Bryce. Bryce lives in Martin, Tennessee. You can see a lot of people want to know about color. Uh, and we also, the last one is from Jason. Jason lives in Grand Forks, North Dakota. They all want to know, why do we pick tan for our color? Was there a special reason we picked tan? A lot of colors in the market. Red, there's yellow, black, just about any color you want under the rainbow. Well, we picked tan. It's a nice color. A couple reasons. It's a, a natural color, a little easier to clean. And also, when we think about a lot of our calls are at night, that we put firefighters into darker colors, they get tougher to see at night. So that's one of the reasons we picked uh, tan. And it works out well for us. We haven't had any problems. Again, we want to make sure our firefighters are highly uh, visible at night. And that's also why we have all this reflective striping on him. OK, this is a question from Austin. Austin lives in Londonville, Ohio. He wants to know, how often do firefighters get new gear? Well, every firefighter is outfitted for brand new gear when they get to the training center. So this is custom made. For John, we don't just grab it off the rack, custom made. About every seven, six to seven years, a firefighter will go through uh, gear. Occasionally, it will get torn uh, or get stuff splattered on it. You know, it might get tar or whatever, and we might have to replace it more often. But roughly, we're looking at about six to seven years. So it's a pretty good investment. We want to keep our firefighters very, very safe. If you turn around, John, this is a question from Chris. Chris lives in... Uh, Jameson, Pennsylvania, and he wants to know, he has a question, um, 
Firefighters have their name on the back of their coats. Why do you do it? Well, one of the reasons is from the front, we can see all these handsome guys and gals. We can tell who they are. But from the back, it's difficult to tell uh, who people are, especially if you want to radio them and you know which crew they're on or what area they're on, so we can identify them by the names in the back of their coats. And it's been very handy for us, especially when you get a large fire and you have a lot of different people. And from the back, pretty much everybody looks the same, and we're hoping they all have their, their, all their gear on. Another thing, we talked about this on previous shows, but here's that harness that we can pull if he does go down, and that's a, a lifesaver there. Okay, John, you can turn around now. Getting hot yet? A little bit. Okay, that's okay. It's good for you. Um, Meredith is from Federal Way, Washington, and Meredith wants to know about taking care of our gear. Well, there's a specific standard out there, a National Fire Protection Association standard on washing it and caring for equipment. We actually send all our gear in. We have special uh, washers and dryers that are kind of like uh, a home washer and dryer, only on steroids. They're big, they're powerful. We have special soap, detergent we use to clean those. They're completely taken apart and washed. Uh, on a regular basis so we keep them clean. You know, guys like John, they're, they're always working, so we have to have a regular basis for keeping this stuff clean. And it, it, again, it's also to keep firefighters uh, healthy and safe because we don't want all the kind of the, the stuff off his coat floating around in the air, too, in a fire station. Not only do we have turnout gear, the gear that firefighters wear to go into fires, we also have uniforms, kind of like I'm wearing. And this question is from Andrew. Andrew lives in Plano, Texas, and Andrew wants to know uh, about what the uniforms are made of, uniforms meaning these uniforms, and why they don't burn. Well, we put our firefighters in special uniforms, shirts and pants, usually made out of a type of material, kind of like Nomex, which it will, rather than burn, you will get some flash protection from it because our firefighters can be in all kinds of different environments. It also adds another layer of protection when they print out their turnout gear. And specifically, the material that we uh, use will not burn. And it's very important for our firefighters because we have to worry about flash fires and because our firefighters are just about everywhere. So those are the uniforms. They have uh, no mixed out shirts, pants. We have T-shirts. They can get sweatshirts. Everything uh, comes in, but it's, it comes at a price. Uh, shirts run about $70 just for a shirt. Pants are uh, about the same, a little more expensive. So when we start outfitting our firefighters, we have to look at that cost. But it's something that's critical to our firefighters, and we want to keep them all safe. I have three questions, and these three questions are all about the same. Uh, first one is from Martin. Martin lives in Sioux Falls. Lisa, Lisa lives in Sioux Falls. And James, James lives in Nova Scotia, Canada. And they want to know, what's a firefighter's most memorable calls? And I have no one better than Captain Mike <coughs> Nelson. Mike is re after 27 years. 28 and a half, Jim. Oh, 28 and a half, it's close. retiring yeah. next month. And you pretty yeah. much, and I've, we've been with your crew, don't, sharp crew, aren't they? Uh, just sharp and good looking, too. Yeah. I tell you, a, you, you got the pick of the litter. Follow the leader, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> what was, uh, after 28 years, do you have one call that sticks out in your mind more than others? Yeah, there's uh, been several, uh, a variety of calls, but one of the, one that sticks out is a uh, small airplane crashed on top of Brown Drug years ago. Now, Brown Drug was a two-story building just off, off of the runway? Probably closer to a one-story with a flat roof on mm -hmm. top. And the airplane, uh, they took off from the Sioux Falls airport, and they started having engine trouble, so they tried to make it back to the airport. They didn't make it and crashed on top of the, on the roof up there. And then so when you guys got there, that's about the most unusual call that anybody has is a plane on top of a building. Yeah, it provided a number of different uh, Problems. Okay, so you, you got the. Now you were a pretty new firefighter, right? That's because that's a while ago. What what were your tasks? What did you have to do then? Yeah, when I first got there, I was assigned to bring uh, the hearse tool up to the top of the roof. Really? Which is a piece of equipment we use to extricate people to get people out. That had to weigh 70 pounds back then. That alone, weighed alone. Yeah, that weighed plus a lot. Your gear. Uh, so I carried that up, and someone else carried the uh, the motor part, the, the engine part, power, of the, yeah, generator. Yeah. And we got that up there, and by that time they had one of the patients out, and that patient was lying on the roof, and they were working on her, so I, was, I assisted in, on that patient while the others worked on the, um, trying to get the rest of the victims out of the plane. Uh, there were several things that, luckily, you know, as an incident commander, you'd have to mm -hmm. look at the, whether the structure was intact. Oh, and, a lot uh, of good things like that. And uh, 
whether there are any patients down below that got hurt. Mm -hmm. And luckily, fuel, on this, they're probably fully loaded yeah, fuel. There's fuel going out. And on this call here, it uh, broke some sprinkler pipes for the sprinkler system in the, in the roof, so we had water flowing down below, and that might have helped us a little bit with the fuel problem. Isn't it weird how 20 years can pass, but yet sometimes it just seems like, it just seems like yesterday that, that you were there? Yeah, it, uh, it kind of all comes back when you start thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, and a whole, a whole career is worth. Well, you've done a great job here. We're going to miss you. I don't know if your crew is today, but you know the rest of us, we're, yeah. we're going to miss you. I appreciate I'm sure they'll get back at me. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike. Got a lot of questions about fire extinguishers. So we're going to have a little session here on fire extinguishers. I have no one better to answer this question than Firefighter Scott. Call me Scooter Minage. <laughs> How long have you had that nickname? Ever since I was real little. So we'll just call you, call you Scooter. Yep. Okay, Scoot. Ready? Yep. First question comes from Wyatt. Wyatt lives in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And wants to know, um, lives in an apartment. What kind of fire extinguisher should a person have in an apartment or in a home? Apartment or in a home, usually just an ABC type okay. of extinguisher. Now, what's ABC stand for? That question is going to come from John. John lives in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and he specifically wants to know what's the difference between A, B, and C fire extinguisher. Well, with A, B, and C fire extinguishers, it basically they're different types of fires that you can put out. Okay. A would be your papers, your woods. Common combustible Common, stuff around. Yep. Okay. Uh, B would be your liquids and some greases. Gasoline, yep. you know, those, those kind of things. Okay. And then C would be your electrical. Okay. Um, basically, you know, outlet on fire, something like that. So if we tell John to get an ABC fire extinguisher, and it's right on here, yep. the different types, that's an, basically an all-purpose fire extinguisher. He can put out common combustibles, electrical, and liquids. Liquids and greases. Perfect. Correct. This next question is from Matt. Matt lives in Tennytown, Maryland. Matt wants to know, how do you use a fire extinguisher? So is there an easy way, you know, you got a lot of pressure, you got this fire going on, is there an easy way for firefighters to remember how to use a fire extinguisher? Uh, the acronym that we're taught is PASS. Okay, P-A-S-S. -S. P-A-S-S. -S. And what that stands for, P is for pull, you pull the pin. Okay, pull. A is for aim. Okay. You want to aim it at the base of the fire. Why not, if we have a fire roaring, why not at the top? Because your most heat is being generated in basically that, the seat of the fire. And is that at fuel's the base. down there. We want to cover that fuel up. Okay. Yep. So point, aim, squeeze. Okay. Squeeze that handle. That way you start getting stuff coming out. Okay. And then S, the last S is for sweep. So you want to hit the seat of the fire and then sweep, it, sweep across. it across as you're backing out of the room. You bet. We always want you to be able to get out of that room. Yep. Great. Thanks a lot. Next question. Uh, Cody wants to know, Cody lives in Brooking, South Dakota, wants to know where should fire extinguishers be located in your home? So we want to think about the kitchen, but any place special in the kitchen? Uh, it should be close to a doorway. Why is that? That way you can, if you need to get out, you need to call 911 first before you even try and do anything with a fire. Because it, those fires can get out of hand fast. They can get out of hand real fast, so especially in the kitchen with grease. Get it up doesn't in the take very long. So call the fire department first. Then, then if you're going to grab your fire extinguisher, you should have it mounted next to the door. That way you can back on your way out. So you always have a means of egress out. You bet. We want you to be safe. Last question. And we always say the best, the tricky, the hard stuff <laughs> for last. You ready? Yep. Going to bet your career on this one? Sure. Okay. That could have been a mistake. This comes from uh, Ethan. Ethan lives in Owens Mills, Maryland. And Ethan wants to know, what is a class... D, fire extinguisher. You talked about A, talked about B, talked about C. Class D, what is it? Metals. Metals. And you probably find those if you have a, a machine shop, maybe. Yep. They're milling some equipment, and that'd be metals. And we'd have to have a sp special fire extinguisher for those. Yep. Perfect. Scooter, thought we were going to stump you, but you're the man. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot. Thanks. I'm with Captain Tim Anderson, and Tim is one of our special captains. He's with one of our USAR teams, the Urban Search and Rescue teams on Rescue 4. And Tim has seen and done it all, except for today, Tim. Now, what are you doing? This is the first time for me, too, Jim. <laughs> now, this is... Now, what it is, is we've got... Uh, we're trying to get a boat into the water. Okay. And what's happening is we got access points that we don't have any, you know, around town which, here. Which is... An access point is where you put where the boat Where we can get in? the boat into the water, okay. and right now... In a place like this here, there aren't very many access points. So we're looking at places where we can do this. Well, a bridge come to mind. Somebody on the department come up with a bridge idea. 
So we're trying to deploy a boat off a bridge right now. Okay. Now, now you are a USAR rope rescue guy. You're not really a water guy. How do we get these two teams together? Well, really, I have water rescue certifications too. We got all, you know, we're cross trained in almost all of them. Mm -hmm. So most of our USAR guys are water, high angle, confined space, whatnot. So we work all our disciplines together. And uh, this is where we got the water rescue guys here. We got the rope guys here. And we just work together and come up with a plan. Now, when you do this, and we haven't ever done this before, do you find that it could be a useful thing if we did have a, a drowning or somewhere we need to get in the water? Is it, would it be useful for, for us to do this training? It could very well be because we can deploy this boat pretty fast. This is the first time we did it, and it really didn't take a whole lot of time. And once we get this down pat, we can probably do this in a matter of minutes. And do you see other applications where, where the, the USAR guys could use a ladder, one of the ladder trucks? Uh, would we have any other applications you can think of off the top of your head? Well, ladder trucks, we got ladder trucks deployed around town here, so we got uh, we can get them there in a hurry. You know, the big thing is getting the boats there because we got them just in limited spaces. Sure. You know, the, the trucks are there, so we can actually have the uh, ladder all set up, drive the boat right underneath it, pick it up, and deploy it. And, and away you go. Yeah, away well, you go. it's good we got guys like you because we have a lot of young new firefighters, and they're always looking for, for senior caps with a lot of directions, so I really appreciate all the work you've done, Tim. Not a problem. Thanks. Hey, I'm glad you stayed with us for the whole show. you got to love our firefighters, especially guys like Mike Nelson, who've been serving proudly for 28 years, backbone of the department. Now, we're going to get a couple shout-outs and a special firehouse treat, so just hang on a second. Uh, first shout-outs from Jason. Jason lives in Blue Ridge, Virginia, and he wants a, he's a junior member with the Blue Ridge Fire Rescue, and he wants a shout-out to them. And here's a shout-out to Justin. Justin wants a, is from North Little Rock, Arkansas. And he wants a shout out to the Oak Grove Volunteer Fire Rescue in Pulaski County, Arkansas. I don't think we've ever had one of that yet. So glad you could uh, send out a shout out. We'll get your shirts out. You'll be the pride of the neighborhood. Now, we got a special treat for you. We ask when we send out our t-shirts, we say, hey, send us a picture. And you know what? We always follow up with our fire call members of those firefighters who died in the line of duty over the last month. We're also going to have people sending in their, themselves and their t-shirts from all over the country. So stick around and see that. I'm Division Chief Jim Sedaris, and you've been watching Fire Call.